All right, gents, been meaning to do this for a while. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you all the rigs I use, hooks, sizes, baits, all that stuff when I fish. So let's go get it. First thing, this is the rod I use to throw uh, mini jigs. And I know some of you have been asking, because uh, you don't see it much in the videos, why I, uh, I don't throw mini jigs, but I actually do. I actually used to uh, uh, catch a lot of fish on jigs. Um, I got out of it, uh, I had some shoulder injuries from my old line of work before I retired. It took some long time to heal up, so I, I uh, was sticking a lot to dead stick fishing. Um, but I am doing it, um, still getting back into it cause, uh, those of you that do it often, it does require a bit of a touch. So, uh, uh, I am trying it. I just haven't had much success lately, but, uh, what I got here, the rod is an Akuma SST. It's an eight footer. And then I use a, uh, Shimano Sahara 1000 series reel with, uh, I vary from two to four pound test. It depends. Um, I just don't usually have a lot of faith in uh, two pounds. That's usually why I have the the uh, four pounds. So, uh, so there you go. So uh, yeah, it's a nice nice little combo, and it's uh, uh, a budget combo. It's not super expensive. I know uh, some of you guys that fish that way uh, can spend some big bucks. I try to stay away from that because I'm not uh, super great at it. But maybe as I get better, I might invest in something a little bit uh, a little bit more expensive. Okay, these are my uh, my bait rods. Just a couple of them I have. God, I got too many fishing rods, or maybe I don't have enough, but uh, I have a lot. So these are my mains. Uh, I'm using uh, the Shakespeare Micro Series uh, seven and a half foot rods, and uh, the Shimano uh, Sedona thousand series spinning reels, and then I run uh, four pound uh, fluorocarbon on them. And I switch from brands. I think right now I'm, I'm using P-Line. I've used uh, Berkeley in the past. Um, P-Line seems okay. I'm starting to see a lot of a lot of twist in it, especially when I'm using mouse tails. But uh, I haven't given up on it yet. Everything else seems fine, so I'm still kind of uh, in the R&D phase with the fishing line. But uh, yeah, these these are the setups I use. I get the rods at Walmart. I think they're like 16, 18 bucks, and the reels are probably 30 or 40 bucks. Um, so really not dropping a whole bunch of bucks on my rod and reel setups for uh, for trout. Okay, now as uh, <clears throat> most of you know from uh, watching my videos, I uh, normally fish with uh, what's called a Carolina rig. And a Carolina rig is basically a, a hook and some weights that slide. So um, you can see on here we got an egg sinker and a bead and something called a uh, Carolina keeper. And what this is, it's just a little piece of uh, plastic that you can squeeze on and off of there and adjust the depth of your line on the fly. And then I have this down to your, to your hook. So basically the, the, the theory is, is your weight here sits on the bottom, the fish picks up the bait here at the hook, and then when they run with it, they don't feel any uh, tension of dragging the weight on the bottom or if the weight gets caught or anything. They just have basically some free line, so it gives them a little bit more time to eat. So basically, anytime I'm fishing bait, I'd say 99% of the time, I got a Carolina rig, especially for uh, for trout. And one thing you'll notice out here, along with this this deal called the Carolina Keeper and my uh, my sinker, is I have a little little plastic bead here. And that's about a six millimeter uh, plastic bead. Colors doesn't matter, but um, from what I understand, and I'm not an expert on this, is this bead helps keep the Carolina Keeper from banging on the weight. And so it creates a little less vibration. So when the fish picks up the bait, in theory, they feel even less. Now, I've rigged plenty of these without the bead, and I still caught fish. So, you know, you guys be the judge. If you got the beads, put them on. Maybe it'll help. I haven't seen a major difference, but some of the, some of the times you'll see the bead on there on my rig. Some of the times you won't. Okay, now then, uh, 
something that I've really started fishing a lot and really come to love just this year is uh, the Berkeley mouse tails. And uh, here are some of the favorite colors like the white head and the pink body, or the pink head and the white body. Or if one of these two isn't working, I'll usually throw on this orange and chartreuse one and that one will work. So most of the time when I'm fishing and I'm using uh, mice tails, um, I'm switching between these three. Uh, the other ones work too, um, just not as consistently as these, at least for me. Um, so I'll show you basically how to hook these things up, or at least how I do it. There's lots of ways you can hook these up, but uh, here we got a, a number 10, if you guys can see that there. Basically, it's a, it's a large salmon egg hook. And I'll bring this over and uh, show you exactly how I like to hook them. There's plenty of ways to hook them, so uh, you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that uh, works best for me. All right, so here we go. We got our, our mice tail here and our hook. And what I like to do is stick it right in the base of the head here and then run it down the tail and do it without sticking myself so it's about halfway then I'll pop that hook out and try and slide the eye of the hook into the body so you end up with something like that so it's almost completely straight. You can play with it a little bit because these heads get a little bit difficult. But there we go. And sometimes if the fish are being a little bit more finicky, you can uh, use a smaller hook. This is a, a number 10 salmon egg hook, I guess you could call it, or bait hook. More like that. So it's a little bit harder to see. But doing that seems to work good. Other ways I've seen dudes do it, which also works, is just to run it right through the top of the head like this. Just like that. And that works well too. I just like to, to rig it the other way. Um, just personal preference. I'm sure either way I'll catch fish equally, but uh, that's basically how I do it. All right, now I'm gonna show you how uh, I like to hook uh, power eggs. Um, usually same rig, Carolina rig. I'll use these uh, number 10 owner mosquito hooks. They're uh, strong enough uh, that they won't straighten out on you, but light enough that uh, it's easy to float the bait. So you can do it two different ways. You got your little power egg deal here. You can do it with just one and just run it right through, right? And I like to have it so where it's just about the tip of the of the uh, hook is sticking out of there. Or sometimes I'll put a second one on and it'll look something like this where the hook is completely buried. Now these uh, eggs are soft enough that when the trout hit it, they'll be able to push it out. As you can see, barb is sticking right out there or the tip of the hook right there. So it ends up looking something like this. Um, usually these uh, purple ones, I, th I forget the actual name of the, the flavor, what do they call it? Clear, I guess green, purple, pink, uh, garlic scent, that's what these are. I have the most luck with these at uh, Silverwood and Big Bear. Um, the trout seem to like them. It's just a little something different to offer them if they aren't hitting mouse tails or power bait. Um, this is uh, a really good go-to. If uh, the bite's slow on other things, they may really want to hit this. Then we can go on to, to uh, rigging power worms. I dead stick fish these power worms too sometimes. You just have to have a, a hook that's small enough and you have to double check this and anytime you're using any of these baits um, you got to make sure they're buoyant and they float underwater so before you cast it out give it a little test on the shore um, because you throw it out there and this thing's in the dirt you're not going to get any fish or it's going to be a rare chance you're going to get a fish so lots of times i'll uh, i'll bring my bait in and 
wondered why I wasn't getting bit, and I checked to see if it floats, and I might have forgot to check before I casted it, and it wasn't floating. As soon as I correct it, things may change. So with these, I like to use these uh, tiny number 14 mosquito hooks. If you can see those, they're little bitty. And uh, they are small enough that you put that one hook in there, and it will float this. Um, you just thread it on like any other normal worm or like the uh, mouse tails I showed you. Um, try to conceal the hook as much as possible. Um, and those little tiny hooks, I mean, if you look at these things, they're little tiny. I've caught uh, up to six pound trout on these hooks and it hasn't straightened. They are uh, really tough hooks. And I've, I've usually, I can catch multiple trout on them. Uh, I can get them, you know, unhook the fish reposition the worm and still uh still fish it as tiny as a delicate as that looks it's it's a pretty pretty tough little hook but definitely if you're gonna do it i'd recommend uh this one time sticking with a brand name and getting these uh the owner ones one of the last things i'm going to show you is uh how i rig good old power bait now there's two different ways i rig it this right here is my go-to it's a number uh 16 treble hook you can also use the uh Number 10 mosquitoes, too. Um, sometimes those work good. I don't know why. I've always just been more partial to uh, treble hooks. Um, the way I like to do it is I just dough it up into a, into a simple ball. Some guys make footballs out of it. I, I make a small ball, and I just do enough to where it covers the entire hook and not too much more. I don't like having a huge ball of, of bait out there. I like it to be a little bit smaller, but very important. When you're doing that, you have to make sure that uh, the bait still floats because many of the time, a little bit of that, that power bait comes off of there and it's not going to be buoyant enough and this thing's going to end up in the dirt and you're not going to get any fish. So that would be the biggest thing. Or sometimes I'll use a size small. This I'll use a 18 if the fish are being finicky and sometimes that'll help. Um, but more often than not, it's a 16 that I'm usually going with. Now, I'm going to show you something might... If you're new to fishing, this might blow your mind a bit, but uh, I still do this from time to time, and it works. Um, back before there were mouse tails, we had to make our own. And what we started doing was you take these old Berkeley power worms that usually I use used ones. Like if uh, it's something that uh, I was fishing some other way, either they had a jig or whatever, and it got beat up from the fish biting it, uh, instead of throwing it away... I use it for this. So usually I break off amount of it and they just stick this right on here. Just like that. And then now you rub any flavor power bait and make a ball same as you would anything else. And now you have a mouse tail. Any combination colors, anything you want. And uh that's what we used to do back in the day before we had these uh, these cool pre-made ones. <laughs> um, and that's what I used to do. Uh, and it works great still. So uh, sometimes if, uh, say, your mouse tails aren't working, something else is working, go to this. You never know. You might find the exact co uh, color combination because with the power bait and these power worms, if you got a bunch of different colors, you could find something that isn't covered in the... Uh, the uh, mouse tail catalog. So it's just a little something for your, uh, your toolbox uh, in case uh, the other things aren't working. Okay. Uh, something that's also really important is uh, leader links. Now, one thing I found that's pretty interesting is uh, generally fishing at big bear. If you're bait fishing, you need a really long leader, um, especially as it gets warmer, a lot more, uh, seaweed grows there and you got to get above the weeds and all that kind of stuff but this time of year i found and you see this leader length um little over a foot um that's all i use first thing in the morning there for whatever reason i'll set one out with a short leader like this and i'll set another rod out with a much longer leader this one always gets hit 90 percent of the time no matter what the bait the shorter leader always gets hit so for whatever reason, at Big Bear, and this is at Big Bear, um, when it's cold, it seems like the trout are real close to the bottom. Uh, 
looking around to eat. Um, I will get bit on the longer leader sometimes, but 90% of the time it's that short leader. As the day goes on or the morning goes on, gets around 9, 10 o'clock, I'll start lengthening the leader out. It's like they come up a little bit. So um, that's something I've started to notice. And honestly, I've only been shore fishing there for a few months. Mostly I do uh, uh, trolling in the boat, but uh, I notice that. Another thing is always vary your leader links. You can't tell where the fish are and what area of the water column when you're on the shore. You just can't. So if you aren't getting bit, change it. Sometimes I've gone down like six inches in leader length just to try it. Um, sometimes I go so long it's hard to cast. So always vary your leader lengths. Another thing at most of these lakes, especially when fishing for trout from the shore, um, I don't stay in one spot more than an hour or two if I'm not getting any bites. If there's no uh, fish biting, if there's no uh, surface activity in the water, if I don't see any fish in the area, if I don't see anybody else catching any fish, um, I'll move on. Because more than likely, the trout probably aren't there. Uh, trout, to me, don't seem like they're super smart, like some other fish. And uh, usually, if you can find them, you can usually, if you put the bait in front of them, one or two of them is going to bite. So if you aren't getting bit, chances are they probably aren't there. So um, at all our lakes out here in Southern California, the ones I fish, um, don't be afraid to move around. Even if you've caught a couple fish and it's been a while, chances are the fish migrated some to another spot they like to go to. They may come back, but it might be a few hours. So sometimes I'll move try some other spots if I don't get anything, I'll come back to a spot where I caught fish in an hour or two sometimes they're back. So that'd be another tip, I guess, is uh, don't ever be afraid to, to move around and don't, don't get too socked into one spot in one area. All right, gents, well, well that's about it. That's about all I could think of. I, uh, I took some time, tried to write down some, some things that uh, that I could remember and especially try to think of things, uh, the most common questions I get. Um, uh, so I could put together something, especially since uh, it's been kind of slow lately. I am going out. I'm still going out, at least to Big Bear. I'm trying to figure out a trip to uh, Silverwood. I've uh, been out to Big Bear a couple times. You haven't seen a video because I got skunked both times. Second time I went, I was down by Red House. I did get two bites, uh, but they were very timid. Um, my strike indicator went up and that was about it. So, uh, at least at that time, it was about a week ago, right when the storms were going, like when they got uh, a whole bunch of snow up there real recently, I went the day after it stopped snowing. So it was beautiful, there was lots of snow. Um, so I don't know if it was weather related or not. The trout were there, um, as I did get two bites, I didn't see anybody else catch anything. Um, so hopefully that has changed, I'll be going back uh, this weekend hopefully and uh, seeing if I can figure out where they are but uh, any other questions you have I always like answering that stuff um, just trying to figure out how we can all catch more fish together so uh, uh, let me know like and subscribe give it a thumbs up and uh, I'm always available hit me on Instagram at uh, C Spanker Outdoors and if you got a question there too so uh, till next time tight lines and uh, hopefully I put out a video where I'm actually catching something <laughs> all right see ya